Welcome back again to Spotlight, where we feature the University of Central Arkansas's College of Fine Arts and Communication. I'm Donna Lampkin Stevens. Today is a special day on Spotlight. I'm joined by uh, my friend Jennifer Deering, who uh, works with sponsored programs, Grant Ryder, and Frederica Sharkey, who is Director of Media Relations. And there are many other people who could be joining us today to talk about this uh, momentous uh, occasion, but, uh, and there will be a couple others who join us later. But we're here to talk about UCA's involvement in the 60th anniversary commemoration of the desegregation of Central High School. And I'm so thrilled to have both of you here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's talk about how this project got started. I know, I think I was involved before either of y'all. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, in 2011, our former dean, Dr. Roland Potter, mm -hmm. came up with the idea of doing an opera based on the story of the Little Rock Nine. And we all thought, that's a great idea, but it's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> how are we going to do this? And um, uh, six, seven years later, it's, it's going are. to happen. And, and we're, we're yes. just, we're, th we're, th we're thrilled to death. And it is the centerpiece, the opera's the mm -hmm. centerpiece of this huge uh, group of events mm -hmm. that Jennifer and Frederica and G Dr. Gail Seymour have been working on among many others. So let's just talk about, mm -hmm. first let's talk about Central High and, and what 60 years later that means. Mm. Gosh. Wow. Well, I know for me, um, of course, I was not alive at the time, but my father was, and um, he witnessed these events unfolding in... On television? On television. Um, in, from, from out of state. From Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and it had such a major impact on him that he really... How old was he, Jennifer? I, I think he was in seventh grade. Oh, yeah. Um, he really taught me a lot about the civil rights movement and the important people who played a part in it, and so... Um, I came to Arkansas with the idea that I would continue um, his tradition and um, the little ways that he worked to to uh, work toward equality. So that's kind of my interest in it. Is he still my, living? No, he died in 2010. Oh, he would he would love he would to. be so incredibly proud of yes, me right yes. now. I, I wish he were here. I think to that's see wonderful. This. Yeah. Frederica, you grew up in Mississippi. I did. I grew up in Mississippi, and um, um, like. Jennifer, I was not alive at the time. <laughs> Nor was um, I. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but my father was as well, my, mm -hmm. both my parents. And um, my dad, of course, um, in, well, both my parents in Mississippi. Um, my dad and mom should have been about 10 years old around mm -hmm. that time. So they were living in the mm -hmm. segregated South. Mm -hmm. So learning about the events in Little Rock as well as some other areas mm -hmm. um, in Mississippi in their own communities mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to hear their stories um, it was very impactful for me growing up and um, now seeing the progress that we've made. Still a lot of progress that we're we not there need yet. to do, but, yes. but, we've come um, a, but a lot of progress that's, that's been made and, and even my dad and some of the things that he would say to me growing up, um, we weren't allowed to come in the back door of our house Good. Um, because he said that he'd gone through so many back doors in his life he never yeah. wanted us to ever have to go to Good. a back door. Um, things of that nature, and now he's okay with it. So <laughs> we've grown beyond that just in my own home. Um, so it's very impactful, and I think it's um, incredibly important that we celebrate this part of our history. Mm -hmm. We do have a very um, textured history as a nation, mm -hmm. and to celebrate 60 years later, mm -hmm. gosh, um, that's so incredibly important, and I'm so mm -hmm. glad that UCA is a part of it. And I, I just can't talk about how proud I am to be a part of this with UCA. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I think all this started for, for me, personally, with my research on the Arkansas Gazette, right. which won mm -hmm. two Pulitzer Prizes mm -hmm. for its coverage of the desegregation of Central High yes. School. High school, And we did a documentary film or two, mm -hmm. and it's just sort of morphed from there, but we've gotten to meet members of the Little Rock Nine. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, we've had Minnie Jean Brown Tricky here, mm -hmm. and uh, Elizabeth Eckford Elizabeth multiple Eckford. times. Yes. And uh, we've met Melba, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mel Melba Patilla, and also uh, Thelma, Thelma Mothershed, Mothershed Ware, yeah. uh, uh, Terrence Roberts. We were in Little Rock, yes, remember? So we yes. had, it's, it's been a wonderful, <laughs> and I, I'm just so excited about it. So, so Jennifer, let's talk, um, the, the opera, well, look, let's, um, the opera will have a preview scene on Monday night, mm -hmm. September 25th at uh, 7.30 p.m. at Reynolds Performance Hall. It's a scene from the opera. It's mm -hmm. not completed yet. Um, and um, that's kind of the, the um, ultimate, that, that's the climactic event. 
Also that evening, uh, Dr. Henry Lewis Gates Jr., who mm -hmm. is the consultant for the for the opera, mm -hmm. and uh, Tanya Leone, the composer, mm -hmm. will be here to lecture, and will be a, there will be a discussion about it. That that's kind of the the ultimate event. Sure. Uh, there's right. a lot of stuff leading up to that, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. So Much. talk about how uh, how this kind of morphed from from the op the original idea of the opera. So the opera will not be completed until uh, July 2018 and it will we don't we don't know when it will be performed mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there is we have opera in the rock but it's not a large enough production company to produce an opera of this uh, magnitude so Gail and I were sitting in her office sort of brainstorming what could we do to sort of let people know that that this creation had had been born into the world or would be about to be born into the world and we got to thinking well you know the 60th commemoration is about to happen in two years this was two years ago and um, you know this is the 50th was important that's a milestone but the 60th is probably the last milestone year mm -hmm. when all eight of the living members of the nine will be alive to to witness um, these events mm -hmm. and so we thought well we either need to go big or we need to go home mm -hmm. and <laughs> so <laughs> we came up with some ideas and we went down to the uh, Little Rock Central High National Historic Site to visit with Superintendent White and a couple of park rangers and we said well what would you think if, if we did these activities as part of the 60th commemoration we we thought that they would just go no, this is ours, mm -hmm. we'll plan it. And um, everyone looked around the table and they said, we love it, let's do it. Good. And so um, two years later, <laughs> we have a, a huge um, commemoration going on with, with about 20 different activities taking place. And this is going to take, uh, I guess the first, uh, some things are sort of already it's, happening. Yes, Friday, um, uh, Blake Tyson debuted his original September score. September the 8th. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, the, um, for the actual 3D mapping mm -hmm. projection Which we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that started Friday. And, and the big, mm -hmm. the big uh, events will unroll, unfold uh, the 23rd? 23rd is really when the fireworks start. Okay. And, and the significance of the opera happening and, and Dr. Gates and Tanya Leon being here mm -hmm. on September 25th is that is the actual date uh, of 60 years earlier yes. that, the, that the nine finally got to enter the school. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Uh, so talk about imagine how uh, imagine if buildings could talk. So That's interestingly, I'm a grant writer. Um, we came across this unique opportunity. The NEA was celebrating its 50th anniversary, and the NPS was celebrating their 100th. National Endowment for the Arts and the National Park Service. Yes, and they got together and decided, well, we're going to have a special grant program to celebrate these um, important years in their existence. And so they got together and created a, a, a grant program. And it was kismet. I, we just thought, well, this is it. I'm, this was meant to be. Mm -hmm. So we applied for um, this, particular, uh, propo this particular program and um, talked extensively with the program officer. And every time she called, I thought, We've, we're going to get this money, and we did get the money, $25,000 wow. toward the project. Great. So, Great. so what are some of the, uh, well first let's, let's push the website, yes. <laughs> uh, because there are too many events to, yes, to talk about are. here. So uh, do you have that, Frederica? I do, I do. It's uca.edu slash cfac, cfac, slash central 60. Six and zero. I, six zero, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and I do want to mention that for the, at least the UCA community, if you want to learn a little bit more about all of the events and get a preview, have a little sampling, a little taste oh, yeah. of some of the events that are happening on Monday, September 18th from 3 to 4 mm -hmm. in the Mirror Room, we will have a kickoff event mm -hmm. for the UCA community. So faculty, staff, folks in Conway, students, students mm -hmm. um, anybody who wants to come so that you can see a little preview of the 3D mapping project and, and a little preview of some other things. And that's yes. the Monday of the kickoff week. That's the Monday actually. of the kickoff yes. week. So, yes, yes, so. yes. I want to go ahead and push that as well. Yes, yes. So website address, 
uca.edu slash CFAC slash Central 60 and then September 18th. Very good. Okay, so tell us some of the highlights, Jennifer. Well, we have um, two days of events. Um, the first begins with uh, the Peace Festival, which is not a UCA event, but it fits nicely into what we're doing. And um, that will be going on during the day. There'll be food trucks, there'll be information booths. Um, so I encourage people to, you know, take a look. Come back um, at noon, the uh, bands from around the Little Rock area, high school bands, will be performing. And that will lead up to the Jazz Ensemble, which features um, No Tears Sweet, which is Chris Parker's composition um, that was inspired by Melba Patillo, uh, Melba Patillo's um, uh, memoir, mm -hmm. um, Warriors Don't Cry. Warriors Don't Cry. Uh, so that will be a, a very special occasion, and um, the Central High Chorus will perform after that and lead the audience down the street, down Park Street, to um, Central High to begin the 3D mapped video. And we're going to have Scott Metter and Blake mm -hmm. Tyson on yeah. in, in a moment yeah. to talk about this, this project. But, um, let, let me ask you first, what is a 3D mapped video? And I'm going to ask Scott the same thing. Sure. Um, <laughs> This is something that's never been seen in Arkansas, mm -hmm. so it's a very good mm -hmm. question. This is, this is a video that uses the, a building, basically, as the screen. So it's huge. I mean, it's, it's bigger than IMAX. Mm -hmm. And what they can do with this type of video, they can show a building being built, and it looks like it's happening right in front of you. They can show a building coming down, and it looks like it's happening right in front of you. Um, they can take x-rays into, into the building. Mm -hmm. They can do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, this will be the first time that the building itself actually has a meaning for the video. And uh, we also want to say that this is the 90th anniversary year of the building of so, actually yes. the, the high school. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so, so what has, and I'll, I'll get more in details about Scott. So, so sure. tell us a little bit more about the event with uh, Tanya and, uh, and, and uh, Dr. Gates. That event takes place Sunday, Sunday, September 24th, mm -hmm. and um, it's called Civil Twilight, and Core Performance Company. Which has been here multiple times. Multiple times. We've, had, mm -hmm. uh, very, we've talked about them a lot. Right. They will, they will be performing uh, a dance along with spoken word artists that will kind of lead people into the commemorative garden, which has nine benches um, to symbolize the nine students who brave, bravely uh, went into Central High on September 25th, 1957. And uh, then the spoken word artists will will help those dancers bring people. And it's site specific. It's site specific, so it it really brings you into the garden and helps mm -hmm. you to understand the meaning behind it and um, um, everything that it symbolizes. Once that performance is complete, um, uh, Henry Louis Gates and Tanya Leone will speak about the arts as an entryway into understanding the, the social issues of our day in a bigger way than, say, a town hall. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you go to a town hall, you've got an agenda, you're going to do the talking. This inspires people to have a conversation afterward. And we have some community um, conversations planned with core performance mm -hmm. kind of taking the lead on these mm -hmm. um, that we really hope people will come and, and feel that the art, that the art has transformed transformed them and opened them to conversations that wouldn't have been possible before. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, th I think it's going to be a very striking, very solemn. Mm -hmm. uh, very Candlelight it, walk yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, after, after uh, Gates and Leon speak, um, the dancers will then, we will we'll light candles together and the dancers will take us back down to the facade of Central High to watch the 3D video again, so it, it's ongoing for two days. So how, how, I mean, have you marked off your whole calendar for this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, I have. Yes. I have. 
it's um, I'm, it's part of my birthday celebration. Oh. Yeah. So my birthday is just a few days earlier. Okay. So it's a great way to celebrate yeah. my birthday. Yeah. Um, yeah, made it all about me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things, just bridging um, off of a couple of things that you mentioned, one of the community conversations that's happening is happening at the Arkansas Arts Center. This actually is not an event that UCA is hosting. However, it's around the Will Counts photo yes, exhibit. Yes. And Will Counts, as we know, um, I hope we all know, mm -hmm. um, is a UCA grad, mm -hmm. 1952. And many of the images that we saw coming from the Arkansas yes. uh, uh, newspaper um, were those images taken by Will Counts mm -hmm. um, in his young days as a, see, as a journalist. And we've seen these on, in, in all and, the news coverage. Uh, and, and, all. and you yes. know, Central High really was, and as a former t television yes. journalist too, yes. Central High was the mm -hmm. first television news story. It, it really was. It changed. What it, do you think? It did. What do you think about that, Frederica? What do you? Th how do you think that the the, the news coverage on mm -hmm. t on television? affected that, that story in, in our world? Well, um, I kind of go back to um, the decisions to send in federal troops. Mm -hmm. Had those images mm -hmm. from Will Counts, had those other images from television broadcasts never had been seen, had we not right. had right. those images. I mean, I guess it, it would be considered the Instagram of the time, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Had those images never come out of Little Rock, I don't know that the decision to send federal troops had ever been made, I don't know that the rest of the world would have looked at the United mm -hmm. States mm -hmm. and our segregated South in the same way. Mm -hmm. So it changed, as you said, mm -hmm. it changes conversations. Mm -hmm. Images and picture, all of these things change conversations and push conversations forward. And we do see progress. And it changed absolutely the way in which we cover events, mm -hmm. um, the timing in which we get to get to the scene. And mm -hmm. you remember those days, mm -hmm. um, you gotta get there quick. We gotta be the first, we gotta tell <laughs> <laughs> um, So it absolutely changed life as we know it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think it probably um, laid the foundation for what we see today, which is citizen journalism, mm -hmm. as I refer to it, and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter being your first source for news. All of those things laid the foundation for what we see today, good or bad, mm -hmm. um, but it certainly changed the way in which we, in which we process. So see. we've just got a, a couple of minutes left in this segment. Mm -hmm. What do you hope that the audience, that UCA students, that the UCA community can get out of this whole, this whole um, solemn commemoration? Well, you know, this has been a journey for me <clears throat> over the last two years. And I think one of the things I've learned and that I hope our community will take, take away from it is there is nothing more valuable than the face-to-face -face conversation. Mm -hmm. If you really want to get to know someone, mm -hmm. you really need to meet them, and you need to meet them halfway, mm -hmm. at least. And one of the things is we've... Gail and I have been everywhere. We've, we've met so many different people, so many different stakeholders. We've tried to ensure that everyone has a voice in this, mm -hmm. that it's not ours, and right. that we're not we've imposing been careful it about that. Right, mm -hmm. on people. And people, you know, they've, they've been, sometimes they've been, well, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? But then after mm -hmm. you have the conversation, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, well, of course. Yes, we'd right. love to help. We're all in right. this yeah. together. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. let's sign us up. Mm -hmm. And so I That's think I think that face-to-face -face communication, mm -hmm. we, we, we often get behind email and Facebook and Twitter, and, and, and we yes. think, oh, well, that'll get the job done. And I, I, think, it's, I think it's the personal. Mm -hmm. I would hope that we all see this as an opportunity to celebrate. Um, I, I literally spoke to a, a colleague today who looks back at that time and the images and um, reads news clippings, et cetera, and gets a little sad. And I certainly understand that perspective, but I hope that this presents an opportunity to be excited, mm -hmm. to be glad in the progress that we've made, and to look forward to future progress. Yeah, and not to stop. I and mean, not, not to, to yeah. stop, yeah, yeah. 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 but mm -hmm. to celebrate. And we do, we, we do have a textured history, obviously. Mm -hmm. But look at this as a time absolutely to be solemn and recognize but also to celebrate the progress that we've made and look forward to future progress. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, ladies. Thank I'm so you. glad Absolutely. you've been with me today, and I'm looking forward. I hope everyone will come down to Central High and also to UCA to be a part of this. Yes. I'll be back in a moment with Blake Tyson and Scott Matter. There I am in college. Number seven for the University of Central Arkansas. Life on campus is amazing. There's so much around to experience. 
and you learn so much. It's crazy. And crazy fun. UCA is where I found my passion for physical therapy and made my career working with kids a reality. It's how I got here. Go here and go anywhere. Go UCA. I'm joined now by my friend Scott Metter, Associate Professor of Film, and Blake Tyson, uh, Professor of Music, and they have uh, a very integral part of our Central High uh, commemoration. So welcome to Spotlight. It's been Thanks. a while. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so Scott, um, tell us how you got started, and, and Blake too. Uh, I, I hear Dr. Gail Seymour was the culprit to, get, <laughs> right. to getting both of you involved. That is true. <laughs> yeah, she, um, um, in the summer of 2015, she gave me a call and said, do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why is that I had done some uh, projection events, uh, projection mapping specifically, as well as other mm -hmm. uh, live projection events, and she knew it was kind of my thing. And she thought it would be an interesting thing to do for the commemoration. So she just called and said, would you want to do this? And she had kind of tracked down a, a National Endowment um, for the Arts um, grant mm -hmm. that could mm -hmm. support it. And uh, were you involved from the beginning as well? Did she call you pretty quickly about the same time? Yes, and uh, then Scott and I talked on the phone maybe later that day mm -hmm. okay. that this whole thing started to unfold. Snowball. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so why did you want to get involved in a, in a project like this? I mean, you grew up in Arkansas, Scott. You grew up in Georgia. Mm -hmm. what, what, what about the story yeah, struck you? Yeah, well, there, there are two reasons why I got involved. The, the first is from a projection mapping point of view. To, uh, to project on the exterior of a building is really expensive. Mm. And so having the opportunity to do it is, is super rare. Oh, and so, so my gut reaction to it was, yes, I want to do this because it's not something I can do on my own. Mm. Yeah, um, so yes, <laughs> make, make it happen. And then from there, obviously the, the content was going to be about the school. I was, it was presented to me as the 90th anniversary of the building and the 60th anniversary of the desegregation crisis. And so, uh, so I saw both of those as opportunities to uh, uh, be able to create imagery and, and help tell their stories. Uh, so that both of those things were exciting. The chance to do it and what I could yes. do with the content. What about you, Blake? Just well, for me, um, <clears throat> the, I talked to Scott about this and, and Dr. Seymour about this too. I felt like I couldn't write a piece of music that was about the history of the school. Because without dealing with a visual medium to mm -hmm. represent all that, it's very difficult to focus mm -hmm. the energy of a piece. And <clears throat> really the reason um, that we're talking about the school in, uh, at the ninth anniversary is because of the 60th anniversary of the mm -hmm. Little Rock Nine. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wrote a piece that really was focused on the idea of the courage uh, and strength of the Little Rock Nine and how they changed the world. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to represent. But in talking to Scott, we decided that I could write that piece and that piece could still serve as the soundtrack for a broader mm -hmm. uh, projection mapping mm -hmm. about the entire history of the school. Good, good. So Scott, I asked Jennifer this earlier, but mm -hmm. what exactly is projection mapping? Yeah, yeah. projection mapping is, is unique to regular. Normally when you use a projector to just you know, put images on a screen, mm -hmm. your screen is just flat, mm -hmm. just uh, bright and flat. But with projection mapping, the idea is that you're going to project onto some kind of three-dimensional object. And so with the case of buildings, and especially with the uh, central high, it's just the uh, the brighter kind of limestone colored mm -hmm. central section of the, um, that famous of the facade, facade. Mm -hmm. yeah, with the four statues mm -hmm. and three windows and, and uh, doors. And so what makes that unique to just regular old projecting is that all of the animations and graphics and stuff that are created line up to all the architectural details oh, of the okay. building. And so uh, even the um, statues, I, I changed the way they, they're colored and oh, what kind okay. of texture they have. Mm -hmm. and, and at uh, a couple points, we actually animate them and move oh, okay. their arms and, and heads oh, and wow. stuff. And, and we're so going to get to see a little, a little bit of it here. Yeah, here. yeah. And hear a little bit of it. Right, right. And so, uh, uh, so everything, everything that, that we create is unique to that building. And so if you look at it just projected flat or just watch it on a TV, it may still look interesting, but it doesn't have the same impact of when mm -hmm. you actually see it on mm -hmm. the building itself. So, so tell me what you did. You you, you show uh, architectural architectural plans of the mm -hmm. of the building, uh, old news right. footage. Tell me. Right. Tell yeah, me I broke I broke it up. You know, based on listening to Blake's music, I kind of broke it into four themes. Um, 
Uh, the first is just kind of the construction of the building, mm -hmm. and uh, it, uh, it was actually a park before it was a building. So we, we see the park, and uh, and then start to see the construction drawings, and and then finally the kind of the introduction of the statues, and then the unveiling of the the building itself. And then I go into a section that I called school life, where I did a um, I went through a lot of yearbooks. Uh, from from the first just newspapers that, that they did in, in the 20s up until the regular printed mm -hmm. yearbooks that started to show up later in the 30s and just look through all these different yearbooks looking for what, what it looked like to be a student mm -hmm. uh, there. And then so in the school life section, I create this kind of background for these photographs to kind of show how the, the, the students have changed in their look and makeup and, and also technology I thought was very interesting from, mm -hmm. uh, from pre-typewriters practically <laughs> to, to computers, so, so I kind of dabble in that. And it also has an athletic section to mm -hmm. it as well, which is very funny to look at, uh, especially like the way football players, oh, yeah. their, their um, um, uniforms were. Uh, and then the third section is, is about de the desegregation crisis. And I finally, it took months, but I finally got rights to use a lot of the most famous uh, photographs. And so I kind of feature those, mm -hmm. those photographs mm -hmm. uh, during that section. And then the fourth one I just called the, the future. And I interviewed uh, several of the members of the student council uh, at, at Central High and got a sense of what they kind of feel like as mm -hmm. far as being students there and what, how they feel about the school. And it was pretty, pretty cool, pretty inspiring. Good. So I grabbed a lot of their ideas and put that into the last right. section. And, and while this is going to be sort of site-specific and, and we, we're not going to see this again, although it will be on, I understand, on, online at right. some point, Blake, your score is uh, the surf surface of the sky is going to be go on forever. Well, I don't know <laughs> if it will go on forever, but hopefully for a while. And um, one, of the, one of the things about the, the big grant we got for this was through the Na National Endowment for the Arts and the National Park Service. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to get younger generations interested in these stories and, mm -hmm. in a, and going to the parks. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, uh, I'm very grateful that my music reaches out to younger generations, high schoolers and, and college students. Mm -hmm. And so there are at least 35 colleges, um, uh, inclu well, including two high schools, that are gonna, going to perform this piece this year. For the, for the commemoration. As a, as a way good. to, uh, not only for, the, for their, the musical gratification of it, hopefully, but also as a way to teach the students about something that many of them aren't very familiar with. Right. If you're 18 yeah. or, mm -hmm. or, or younger, you may have not ever heard of this. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the things about being involved in this project that was so important for me is that it is, it is something, like I say in the program notes, no matter how significant uh, the events of the past are, they do tend to fade over time. Yeah. And we've got, and art can keep it, can right. keep it going. Yeah. I wish we had more time. We could, sure. we could go on and on and on <laughs> about this, and maybe we'll have you back afterward and see how, how it went. But right. thank you for joining me. Thank you for being involved in this very important project. Get down to Little Rock Central, come to UCA for the Little Rock Central High School commemoration, uh, 60 years. I can't believe it. Right. <laughs> Join us next time. There I am in college. Number seven for the University of Central Arkansas. Life on campus is amazing. There's so much around to experience, and you learn so much. It's crazy, and crazy fun. UCA is where I found my passion for physical therapy and made my career working with kids a reality. It's how I got here. Go here and go anywhere. Go UCA.